Okay, the title for this class is Biomechanics and Swordsmanship. Now, this class started because Josh asked over here, asked, can someone do something about biomechanics? Okay, we make a lot of noise about the biomechanics. Um, it is actually important and it also helps us understand the systems when we're looking at. The first way to actually think about a fencing system, the fencing system is nothing but a movement system. And that's pretty much what biomechanics is, it's how the body moves. So straight up, I'm going to say I am not an expert in biomechanics. Okay, I do not formally study biomechanics. I do not formally understand biomechanics. I understand enough to actually help me teach fencing. Um, if you read any of the biomechanics papers, they actually start talking about first, second and third type levers um, and efficiencies and stuff like that. I'm not going to even look at covering that because that's way beyond the scope of what we need as practical fences. Okay, so what we're going to start with is we're going to start with how the body moves. Okay. So we're going to start with what sorts of joints and ways the body can move. Okay. First, what's the hinge? A very simple hinge. Okay. Um, yeah, if I get too soft because of the wind, let me know. Okay. Or because of the movie. Yeah. Okay. Speak out really loud for camera. How many hinges have we got in the body? One per joint. Uh, there's a few. A lot. Yes. You've got one at the elbow, oh. you've got fingers. the fingers, the knee, and technically the spine is a whole bunch of connective hinges. Fingers. Yeah, fingers, okay. So the hinge is pretty much one job. A lot of people can sell it. <laughs> Very good. But essentially we actually only have one degree of movement in a hinge, and that's along the hinge line. Okay, come on up. <coughs> okay. The second sort of joint movement we have is rotation joints. Okay. So we actually have three rotation joints in the body. Let's see how many people can work them out. Here's the obvious one. Shoulder. Shoulder. Yeah. Hips. Yes. Skull. Let's see your wrist. I can tell you from actual current experience, the ankle is best for the knee joint. Okay. You want to roll the bone The ankle is a sort of rotational joint, and it likes the wrist. It's different to our hips and shoulder. Hips and shoulder is an all and socket joint. It has very, very good movement. The wrist, on the other hand, is a rotation on a hinge. Okay? So, you have good flexibility along the hinge line much less flexibility along the pivot line. Okay? So that becomes important when you're looking at, say, something like wrestling. Because you'll see movement this way or pressure that way. Okay, but can we see the difference? Like, this is only 90 degrees of movement, and this is only 180 degrees. Okay. The only place I have 360 is rotating perpendicular to my aura. Okay. The third type of movement in the body is torsional movement. We know this very, very well from the forearm. We actually know it from spine and hip. Okay? 
without that torsional movement through our hips and centre of the body, we actually can't walk. Okay, that's one of the big differences between us and the apes, is we actually have hips that can move independently of the shoulders. Okay, because this is a bipedal movement. That's where it actually comes from. Okay. That's essentially the three ways the body can move itself. Okay, a hinge, a rotation, and a torsion. Okay. So, how does the body move itself? Contraction. Yeah, it's a simple question. That's actually the right answer. It's contraction. The body only moves itself by contracting a muscle. Okay? And that's the important part is because the muscle has to contract for it to move. And a muscle cannot actually expand itself of its own free will. So what that means is when we actually look at the way the body's put together, we actually have muscles in our position. Okay? So for every muscle to actually straighten, we have a muscle to contract. Okay? And the muscle to contract can't push the arm out. Okay, so this becomes very, very important in things like injury. Mm. You know, think about what happens when someone blows the cruciate ligament. What actually happens to the deep? Yeah, they essentially go ding! It moves in opposition to the contract. Yeah. Okay. So what that actually happens with the muscles, you actually have those muscles working in opposition. Yeah, I know it's going to get cold, it's going to get worse later. Okay. Everyone just actually have a feel of their arm. Okay, just down here on the elbow point. You'll actually feel the hard little cords, top and bottom. Like there's a good one just through here on a lot of people. Okay, these are the attachment points to the bones underneath. Okay. You're also down here on the wrist, you actually can feel a couple of good ones down here on the wrist. These attachment points turn the muscles and bones into, effectively a good way to think about it, is levers and pulleys. Okay? So essentially you have this pulley working up the arm. Okay, so you pull on the pulley and the wrist will move. Pull on the other pulley and it comes back the other way. Same with the elbow, and this time the pulley is actually up here in the upper arm. So if we pull this muscle here, it comes up. <coughs> we pull the pulley at the bottom, and it straightens out. Okay. The amount of force you can generate at each individual joint depends on where it's attached, how it's attached, how big the muscle is, Okay, and that actually decides how big the lever is. And if you get into like Newtonian physics and Aristotelian physics, the bigger the lever, the more force you can generate. You know, someone once said, if I have a big enough lever, I can move the world. Out of full the rest of the lever is the rest of the phrase. So, that's the important part about how the body moves. You have your muscles, they only work in contraction, they have to work in pairs, they create levers and pulleys.